So sometimes when you're making software systems, you have a need to do a bunch of requests and send those requests to an upstream service. So in this example, um, I ran into this on my side project. I have to loop over a bunch of email addresses and send out emails, right? I need to send out emails. And I'm using a third party service called Amazon SES to basically send out those emails. So if you have, let's say 500 or 1000 emails and you just have a for loop or a promise all that just sends them all out at the same time, what usually happens is you end up hitting something called rate limiting errors or some type of throttling errors where SES is going to basically return you a bunch of errors and your script is going to crash, right? You have to basically add in a bunch of try catch handling, some retry handling, which you can do. I mean, it's probably always good to have retry handling and stuff and like, you know, make it retry up to three times if you can't send that email out for some reason. Um, but another approach that you could potentially do is inside your script, this is like a single threaded script that isn't like deployed to multiple APIs at the same time. You can actually do something like a queue. So if you wanted to put a queue in between these two things, so that instead of you actually communicating directly with SES, instead you send messages to a queue and then you have some type of worker process that is kind of reading the messages off the queue at a certain rate, let's say five messages a second or 10 messages a second. So this would be like a little consumer. This is a way to basically rate limit or throttle how many messages you can process second, which is kind of like what we needed in this scenario. Um, luckily, I don't have to do any cr like crazy active M MQ or rabbit MQ type of setup because I'm just having a single node script, which means I can just write some JavaScript to rate limit how often I'm sending out emails. So I wanted to share with you a little library I came across, but this pattern can apply to any language in any system if you ever need something similar to this. And I found this cool little package called Throttled Q. Um, honestly, you could build this yourself. You could either just type some type of function in chat GPT. They could probably uh, give you this solution for this. You could figure out yourself or just do a set interval and just do the set interval at 200 milliseconds. But the idea is you make this throttle Q and you can specify how many messages a second you want this thing to allow to like send out. So in our case, you could say I want five second, five messages every second. Um, and that's kind of what I'm doing over in my project, right? So let me show you real quick. Let's say I have a for loop. I'll say like for let i equals zero, i less than 10,000, i plus plus. And let's say we wanted to console log um, the i out as we loop through. So I'm gonna say throttle. And I'll just go ahead and say console log i, okay? Now, what this is going to do, I, actually, I should probably um, need to add a, a dot error here so my linter doesn't complain. So let's take this script and run it. And what this is going to do is it's going to limit to five messages every second, and then it spaces them out by 200 milliseconds every time. So this true is like spacing out the request. So let's try running this npx yes node, and I'll just go ahead and run that script. And see that it prints out the messages in a nice, slow, throttled um, loop basically. And although this for loop is done, like if I were to go back, let me cancel this real quick. If I were to go ahead and just do a console log here and say done, you'll notice that it'll loop over all 10,000 real quick and it'll say done. And then it'll slowly start processing them. Okay. So even though I kind of set up, set up a bunch of like asynchronous promises, they're not being processed until it's time. And this is something that you could do in your own projects as well. If you need to make sure that you don't hit rate limiting exceptions on APIs, which exists on basically every API. So if you're hitting like the Pokemon API really quick or really often, or you're hitting, I don't know, some type of API, I don't know, you get the point. So let's go to like the example of where I used it on my side project. So I have a function called send email and I needed to do the same thing, right? So I set up this throttle queue. And instead of console logging, what I did was I basically said, I'm going to call this send email function. And I want to make sure that I don't ever get close to my SES rate limit, uh, yeah, rate limits on my account, right? So I said every, you know, five messages every second, space them out, cool. And then whenever I decide to send out that message, I could just go ahead and call this method and return it. And off the bat, I have a rate limiting setup, right? I'm not going to I'm not going to overwhelm SES. They're not going to come back and say I'm sending too much messages. And it's really great because I don't have to worry about writing a bunch of error handling, although I probably should. I probably should have some type of try, catch, retry logic baked in. Um, some of the Amazon SDK 
libraries already have retries set up. I'm not sure if this one does. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I haven't actually tried out is like, do I even need this for SES? Because I would think if I was SES and I was providing you a service, I would have a queue in front of um, the thing that actually sends out the emails so that my producers, such as me, my clients, could send as many messages as I wanted to, but then SES is smart enough to just like limit those or throttle them down for us. But that's not really a theory I want to test out. I don't want to spam out a bunch of emails just for science to see if like I start hitting rate limiting exceptions. I'd rather just play it safe and just throttle them to begin with. So if you know, leave a comment below and tell me that, hey, SES actually won't give you uh, throttling exceptions. You can just send out as, as fast as emails as you want and behind the scenes, they're going to take care of that throttling for you. That would be nice. I don't know if they do that though. Um, but yeah, let me know. Uh, from what I read in the docs, it seems like they, this thing can throw rate limiting exceptions. So I think you might have to cover that. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is like this pattern, this put a queue in between a consumer and some type of API is actually something that you end up doing a lot in the real world. And as you get larger systems, let's say this was actually an API. Let's say you had like a, um, a distributed API. You had like this behind load balancers and you have multiple users like constantly hitting your APIs, making requests to do stuff. You don't want, you know, Black Friday, all the people come in and start subscribing and getting emails because that's going to basically overload this SES service and then all your APIs are going to start throwing exceptions everywhere. So again, doing this pattern where you have some type of queue in between your external third-party API and what you're trying to do is gonna really help solve that problem. Um, and then again, if you need to process these things faster, you just add extra consumers, right? You could, let's say, I just wanna add three consumers, even though I have like five APIs over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add three consumers and I'm gonna process these like round robin style or process these in parallel to make it um, only do a certain subset of events uh, as fast as possible, basically. Um, yeah, so that's all I want to share with you guys. If you guys thought this was a nice advanced intermediate topic, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a discord if you want to join and talk to me directly or just find a place to ask questions if you're trying to learn how to code. Have a good day and happy coding.